Welcome. Voice activation required. Connor Tracer, technical consultant at Synetra. Access denied. It's time to talk about access control in Azure. Welcome back to Synetra's Azure Masterclass series, where the new episode comes a new hair colour. Thought you were always going to go for a colour scheme matching the hair. <laughs> what are you going to do? Black light. <laughs> and today we're exploring Entra ID. This was previously known as Azure Active Directory, Azure AD, or AAD. This is Microsoft's Identity and Access Management Cloud solution. And today we're going to dive into what Entra ID is, why it's critical for your digital environment, um, and some simple steps that you can take to ensure that you've got the essential security settings configured. Whether you're a beginner or you need a quick refresher, let's get right into it. First off, let's talk about what it is. Entra is a cloud-based service by Microsoft. It's designed to handle user identities, grant access to various applications from Microsoft and third-party providers. The simplest way to think about it is if you imagine a virtual gatekeeper that manages access to your digital kingdom, they will ensure that only the right people can get in and access what they need, provided that you take the right steps to set that up appropriately. Why is it important? Well, Entra centralizes identity management. It simplifies access control and it boosts security features like multi-factor authentication and conditional access. It's absolutely essential for anyone that's using Azure or Office 365 as it integrates seamlessly with all your Microsoft services. Setting up Entra. Doing this with the right standard seems quite overwhelming at first because there's so many options available. But once you get yourself familiar with what is available, you realize how simple that really is. So here's how to get started. If you don't already have a tenant, then you can sign up yourself for an Azure subscription. This is something that we covered in our first episode of Azure Masterclass, which you can find probably here. Once you're in your Azure portal, you can start adding users, groups, and devices straight away. You can do that in Entra ID, which you can see I have as a recent resource here, or you can search for Entra along the top. With it previously being called AAD, you can still search for that to find it as it's one of the keywords. In here, you can see that you can create any of your users, giving them appropriate names, whether it's a test account or an admin account, you can do that right in here. Same with groups, which is something we briefly covered when we were doing our back on subscriptions in one of our previous episodes for reader, owner, contributor. So there's a lot you can do there, but very simple to create. What we really wanna focus on today are your basic and essential security settings. Things like password policies, multi-factor authentication, and conditional access, all there to keep your environment secure. What we'll do now is walk you through some steps on how to safeguard your environment with critical things like we've just mentioned, such as MFA, self-service password reset, and launching registration campaigns for your users. For the majority of features to be available to yourself, you're actually going to need a Microsoft Entra ID P2 license. This was previously known as Azure Active Directory P2. So you can configure these settings and understand the benefits. There is a trial license that you can use. This will allow you to secure your environment without any cost implications for the first month. From there, it ranges between £7 and £10, uh, depending on whether you are running on a monthly plan or you commit to a longer subscription length. Uh, it effectively gives you a discount for the longer subscription length. To get the trial, you can follow these very simple steps. If you go to the admin.microsoft portal, which you can see here, admin.microsoft.com, you can actually go into your billing and purchase services, provided you're obviously an administrator of your tenancy. From there, you can search for Entra ID, and you can see here the Microsoft Entra ID P2 license. If you go to details, you'll see that you can select a plan. And from that plan, you actually just want to choose the Microsoft Entra ID P2 trial, which will auto select some settings for you. Just takes a, a minute to load, as we know from these episodes. And it's loaded. So you can see it all fills your details with what you already have in your tenancy by accepting the agreement and placing that order for a quantity of one. As it only you only need to have one tied to your tenant, you don't need one for all of your users. You just need one to activate the security benefits. As you can see, it will take a minute. Kind of license lag. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we've got the order now, which means we should straight away see it in our list of licenses. You can see there it is. That will now activate some benefits for us that previously weren't there, such as changes to registration for multi-factor authentication. The first thing that we want to do, and it's very, very simple, is ensure that passwords are set to never expire, as that is actually best practice and recommendations and is very easy to do. 
First thing you wanna do in your Microsoft 365 Admin Center, which is where we already are, you can just press show all. From there, you should get the option for settings and org settings. Again, you'll have to be a global administrator to make these changes. From there, you can go into security and privacy, and you can see here, we've got the password expiration policy. By clicking straight into that, you can see that setting password to never expire as it's recommended is already there. By default, I think some places have, you know, like 90 day expiry, but it's best to turn that off and set that up straight away. The next thing we're gonna talk about is self-service password reset. Very easy to set up and is a massive benefit for your users as it means they can reset their own passwords using authentication methods that you approve of. Couple ways to do that. First one being within your Azure portal, if you go to Entra, you get the options down here within password reset and you can actually enable that. But what we're gonna do is actually go in to the entry portal. In here, you can go into protection and you get the option for password reset. You can see that for our tenancy, we've got it selected for all, but say you're in a business environment and this isn't enabled and you've got a couple hundred users, you can roll that out to a select few at first and that way it avoids the headache of 200 people having to set up the methods um, that you can select in here. So we've got it set that if someone needed to reset their password, they'll need to approve it in two different forms of authentication, one of them being a mobile app and the other being either email or mobile phone. Um, and from there, it allows users to reset themselves very, very easy. As you can see here as well, uh, there is registration. So what you can actually do is enforce the users to say that their details are correct. And with that, you can say that this has to happen every, as you can see, we've got it every 180 days, but obviously you could lower that and make users confirm the settings every 30 days if you really wanted to. The next one, let's focus on what we would say is one of the most crucial security features, which is multi-factor authentication. There's not really any reason that we can think not to enable it, especially for administrators. It's simple to set up. It slightly extends your login time by a few seconds, but it's significantly enhances your security. Consider this scenario. Someone tries to log in and access your account. They have your password. Without MFA, they're in. They can do whatever they want. With MFA, you now get to approve or deny that logon. A very simple step, something that's so easy to configure and you've just prevented unauthorized access to your account. From there, you can take whatever measures you need, such as rotating your password, but at least you can sleep at night knowing that you've maintained the security of your environment without disruption or any malicious attacks going on. It's very easy to set the allowed authentication methods, which users it applies to, which should be all users in almost all cases, and also set your registration policies all within the entry portal. It's also best to use conditional access, so that's something that we're gonna run through now too. As I said earlier with the password reset, there are a couple of ways that you can do these settings, one being in the Azure portal within the entry blade, but we're going to do it within the entry portal. So if we just go to that, and under protection, you can see that we've actually got the option for authentication methods in here. Um, where you can set what should and shouldn't be allowed. So we've got Microsoft Authenticator targeting all users. Along that, we've also got an email one-time passcode. You can set up a registration campaign. It gives you the ability to roll MFA out to users without preventing them from logging in. Say you want to enforce MFA across your business and there's now 100 users that didn't have it that are going to have it. Without causing major disruption, you can set up a campaign that allows users to snooze this for maybe a day or so. And that way you can get people that do it straight away, some people that want to delay it. And you can even set the number of snoozes like you can see here. If you wanted to, you could do it a group at a time. So you could set the registration campaign up with a data snooze and exclude certain groups and do this all for a specific authentication method. If we go into identity protection within the entry portal, you can actually see that the multi-factor authentication registration policy that is assigned to all users is actually not enforced. The reason for this is without the entry ID P2 license, which we only got a trial for earlier, you can't enforce that. So now that that's on there and we don't have to wait for it, you can actually just enable it and press save. This now enforces this policy for all users to register for MFA throughout this tenancy. Now that registration is enforced, the next thing that we can look to do is set up a conditional access policy. This is one of the most crucial parts of setting up your authentication security for your users. If you just go straight into policies and we create a new policy, let's just give it a simple name like um, enforce MFA all users. And along there, you can literally see all the different options we've got available. So in these assignments, we'll set it to all users like we were just saying. Target resources, this will be all cloud apps with conditions selected only for modern authentication clients. We don't want we don't want users to be able to access legacy authentication, so you want to turn them off. And then from there, you want to grant access with requiring multi-factor authentication. Now, obviously this is a very basic one. You can go a lot further with it. There's a lot of scenarios and different configurations that you'll wanna do. There might be a situation where you have an account that queries a the graph presence API within Microsoft. That account needs to log in from a certain location and query it every day. And that might not be possible with MFA in place. So from there, you can 
actually set an exclusion from a specific IP, which is called a named location with conditional access. And from there, that one user from that one location can log in without MFA, but will either be blocked or forced from anywhere else, depending on how you configure that. You can also enforce different methods, such as, like it says here, requiring authentication strengths. You can also add in that logins can only occur from entry joined devices or require users to be from an approved client application. Beyond that, you can choose how you limit your sessions for users. You can change the sign-in frequency. So if we were to change this to users have to sign in every eight hours, that way you can't keep a session logged on a device and someone come over to it a couple of days later. And we'll also, we'll also remove persistent browser sessions because that shouldn't be required, especially for administrator accounts. But you'll tend to probably configure multiple conditional access policies. One that's very locked down for administrator accounts and then one that's generic for all users, usually just enforcing MFA everywhere they log in. But for now, just for the sake of this, we'll configure this session this way. Whenever you're configuring a conditional access policy that will impact your own account, you'll see this message at the bottom telling you that you shouldn't lock yourself out. I've already got MFA on and because I'm an administrator, it's already enforced just because of the way that the Microsoft tenant works. Global administrators are always enforced to use MFA, but it does recommend putting an exclusion in. Something that we'll cover in another video is the fine tuning of your security. These are just the basics, but what you can do down the line is create break glass administrators, um, which is someone that you exclude from your conditional access policy and use in emergency scenarios for, you know, say MFA isn't working and you need to log in as an admin, that break glass is there as a backup that's excluded, usually with a 32 character password or a feed of authentication. Beyond that, you know, you can also set least privileged roles. So nobody's permanently got administrator other than the break glass. Um, um, and you require users to activate them roles for a set period of time or with a reason. Um, so again, that's something we'll cover another time. Um, but for now, I don't need to exclude my account as MFA is already needed. So you can see that the policy has actually been created in report only mode. Um, the reason for that is that we need to go and change the default security settings for your tenancy. You see, if we try and turn this on, um, it will say that security defaults need to be disabled for you to enable that conditional access policy. Very easy to do. If you go into identity and go into the overview tab, in properties here, you can see along the bottom that you've got to manage your security defaults. And just from there, you can press disabled and say, my organization is using conditional access. Very easy. And now that's done, I should be able to enable the conditional access policy that we've just created. Now you can see as easy as that was from there, every user that signs in within this tenant is now required to approve multi-factor authentication logins. It's extremely simple. It adds a couple seconds onto the login. The only thing that you could consider a pain is that users may have to register for it. But like I was saying earlier, you can do campaigns that make that a lot less of a headache. So as this is the basics, it's not something that we're going to go into tons of detail on and we'll release more videos in the future going over a lot of essentials or you know, recommendations. Um, but one of the things that you can see inside of the entry portal is your identity secure score. You can see how much of an impact a lot of these have such as, you know, setting password expiration policy to never expire. That's immediately a 14% impact on your score for your business. Setting self-service password reset is a small benefit, but it does help to improve it. Beyond that, you've got a lot like blocking legacy authentication, which is a huge benefit and enabling multi-factor authentication. You can see how impactful that will be. You can see that there's actually a lot of other things mentioned here, some stuff that I touched on earlier, uh, such as least privileged administrative roles, designating more than one global admin, which like I said, in ideal scenarios would actually be your break glass administrators um, as they'd be permanently designated. From there, you can set in sign-in risk policies, which would look at a user's sign-in and if it happened, you know, say in the UK and then randomly a couple hours later, they sign in from another country, it will look at that and determine whether that's a risk and report on it straight away. What's your favorite application that uses MFA? My favorite application that uses MFA. I think probably recently, pretty good one is uh, Twitch, Twitch TV. You know, I think things that are in the mainstream have started using MFA as well, because, you know, like we were saying earlier, it adds a couple of seconds on, and yet you're in a scenario where your account is now secure and no one can access anything that you've got, you know, and especially when there's potential financial aspects on something that you're using. Um, but yeah, I'd say recently with like Twitch and some games implementing it, um, probably go with that. <laughs> yeah, so we've covered the basics in this video. Beyond that, there are tons of things that you can look to configure. So whether that's something that you go away and play with yourself or you wait for us to release a future video, there'll be things along the lines of the licensing, 
because there's a lot to consider. It's not just, you know, let's use the basic or the premium licenses. There's a lot to factor in depending on your budget, the size of your users, how strict you want to be with security, even mailbox size. There's, there's a lot to take into consideration when doing this beyond the features and functionalities of the different licensing. So it's definitely something that we'll advise on in the future. There's also the fact that we've not looked over single sign-on, which is a massive benefit to using Microsoft because you can get into multiple applications with only a single set of credentials, which you already know is secured. Now you don't need 2FA for all your different apps because it's on that one account. Makes it a lot simpler and a lot securer. We've also got the B2B and B2C, which is uh, Microsoft supporting the business to business and business to customer scenarios. Um, for external accounts, you know, giving an MSP, for example, the ability to look into their customer environment without the need to create multiple admins or users for the different members of, you know, the IT function. So we'll definitely do another video on just because it is essential, whether it's a recommendation or an advisory of your security, it's always good to know what the best practice is. We'll go over securing your environment to Microsoft's best practices. But like I was saying earlier, you can just look through the secure score and do a lot of this yourself with very little impact. Microsoft have even been as nice as to give you what the impact would be on users and the implementation costs. Some that we'll definitely cover in a future video is setting up break class administrators, using least privileged roles, also covering PIM, which you can actually see is under the identity governance for privileged identity management. In here, you've got a whole host of tools, but one of the best ways to use it is not giving permanent active assignments to users for administrative roles. You will make a user eligible and to activate that assignment for say a period of eight hours they may need someone's approval so that way nobody can just say an account gets compromised somehow somehow someone manages to get through 2FA at that point they don't have any administrative access because they're only eligible for them roles to activate it they need to now send off a request that requires approval but the person that's approving it can very easily ask what do you need global admin for and they know that they didn't request it at that point if for some reason along the chain you've not caught that there's so much benefit to using PIM. So again, that's something we'll cover another time, along with other actions that you can take within to improve your secure score for your tenant. And there you have it. Entra is not just a tool, it's your ally in managing identities and keeping your digital space secure. And with the basic steps covered in this video and reviewing your secure score frequently and action in any improvements that you see, you should actually have some essential security features added into your environment. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'm sure the marketing team will ask me them questions to come back to you. Until next time, keep your digital door secure and your users happy. <laughs> but there is <clears throat> sorry one second but the dry or whatever this video is sponsored by water yes. <laughs> much healthier than a can of Dr Pepper